Roy, were you raised in a religious home? Yes, sir. And what was that? Uh, Christians. Okay. If someone asked you, Roy, to define the gospel, what would you say? Honestly, the gospel is in everybody. Is the gospel in non-believers? Yes. How so? It's because, like... I just talked to someone who said he didn't believe Jesus rose from the dead. Is the gospel in him? Yes. No. I believe it. I believe so because, like, although he may not believe that, he still know there is a God. Because even though he may not think that God was rose from the dead, he has to think and process think mm -hmm. there is a Jesus in, in the day. Although he may not have done this research to see that he, Jesus was actually born in the dead, like it says in the Bible, and like you know God's word is truth. And so it's like, although you may not believe that, it's shown to see that. So it's like, I like see want to go find that evidence for itself, then he can believe what he want to believe. Roy, the same person that I talked to that said that he did not believe in Jesus' resurrection said he believed in God. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that even the demons believe in God. True. So you can believe in God and not believe in the resurrection. True. But the Bible ties both of them together. True. And it says that if you don't have the Son, His perfect life, His death, and His resurrection, then you don't have the Father. Mm. Let me give you this right here. Mm -hmm. Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 defined what the gospel is, and he said it right here. What does that say, right? Read it. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. So the gospel is Christ's death, his burial, and his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Paul says in that same chapter in 1 Corinthians 15, Roy, he says that if Christ was not raised from the dead, our faith is futile. Ooh. We're the greatest of all sinners. So those who don't We're believe. false witnesses about God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the gentleman that said he believed in God, but he didn't believe in the resurrection, is the gospel in him? Mm -mm. No, sir, not no it's more. not. No. But what my question is, was like, so what if he like, his opinion changed later on in life? Say again, Roy? If his opinion changed later on in life. Oh, absolutely. If uh, Roy, if, if, if God opened somebody's eyes later on mm -hmm. and they came to understand the gospel, mm -hmm. yes. And that's our hope as Christians is that even though some people may not believe in the gospel today, Roy, they will in the future. Yeah. And Roy, that's why I'm here today, planting seeds with persons like Adam, who I just talked to, who mm -hmm. said he believes in God, but he doesn't believe in the resurrection. He doesn't believe in Christ's divinity. I plant seeds, and maybe someone will come along and water, and God will give the growth. That's how I be, though. Some people, it's just, it may, it's really the reason why some people be like that is because they don't have nobody to pour that water into them. So they, like, they, like if you don't plant like water a plant, it eventually die out. So it's like those type of situations to where he probably did have a point in time because he know there is a God, but like nobody like planted that water for him. So it's like you probably planted that water for him to uh, strengthen his faith. I want you to read this passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Roy. I'm going to give it to you here. And I want you to read it because I think it's going to reinforce what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And I want you to start in verse 5, mm -hmm. and I want you to read all the way down to the end of verse 9. Go ahead, Roy. Verse 5. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believe, as the Lord assigned to, to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither who plants nor he who waters is anything but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. That's nice. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, so we are planters and we're waterers. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully, God will make it grow one day. Mm -hmm. You probably was his water. He probably had to plant with knowing God, and you just gave the water to know that God was resurrected. That's right, because God, God is sovereign in salvation. Mm -hmm. Roy, if someone asked you, they said, Roy, I know you're a Christian. I know you believe in Jesus Christ. I know you believe in the gospel. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're going to heaven? What would your response be? Honestly, I'm more complacent because like, I know that's only between you and God but only your actions will later on tell you because a lot of things you remember now, you remember then once you are there before him. So I honestly don't give a, like a truthful answer. I'll probably say no until I know it from them because I do my best to do good, but 
as a human, we like are like we have sinful nature. Why not? Do you believe that the Bible is the Word of God, Roy? Yes. Okay, I want you to read another passage here. It's in John chapter 5. It's in verse 24. Starting right there. Read there down to the end of there. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me ha has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed down death to life. Who said that? Jesus. That's right. What do you think about that? It's true. It's true. As that like that's one thing that I like. What's a cut? Think about a lot. That's why. That's why the main thing I've probably been thinking about a lot lately. Yeah. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me may have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Or did it say has eternal life? Has. Has eternal life. What is that? What was that? John five twenty four. He does not come into judgment, but is passed from death to life. I want you to read another one also, Roy. Let me give it to you here. And uh, you said John five twenty four. Yes, John five twenty four. John also wrote in uh, his first epistle, in John chapter five. Mm -hmm. There you go, Roy. Starting right there, uh -huh. and going up to there. Okay. Ooh. All right. I write these to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. John wrote in his epistle, I write these things in this book for those of you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible doesn't say well, we can't really be sure. We can't have a yes or no. Roy, it says we can know that we have eternal life. Mm -hmm. And you know why we can know? Hmm. Because the gospel is not about us. True. It's about Jesus Christ. Christ died, mm -hmm. was buried and rose from the dead 2,000 years ago before you were even born. What part did you have to do with that? Nothing. Okay. The gospel is what saves. Mm -hmm. You can't add to it. You can't subtract from it's it. It's done already. I just talked to a bunch of Mormons that came by, Roy, mm -hmm. and they were telling me that you have to do all these law keepings, all these works to be saved. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, we're saved by grace through faith, which is not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works so no one can boast. Mm -hmm. Titus 3, 5 says God didn't save us because of righteous things we could do, but because of his mercy. Mm -hmm. And so no one's saved by what they do, by, by what they believe. Mm -hmm. And if you believe in the finished work of Christ, he came and lived the perfect life that we couldn't live. He died on the cross for our sins and he rose from the dead. He said his work is finished in John 19, 30. Roy, if we believe in that, if we trust in that, mm -hmm. then God says, Roy, you have eternal life. You've crossed over from death to life. True. You're no longer condemned. Mm -hmm. And we can know we have eternal life. So, Roy, here's the point. Mm -hmm. If we want to be declared God, righteous in God's sight, we have to trust in what Jesus has done, his mm -hmm. perfect life, his death, and his resurrection. We have to trust in that. It's, not, it's none of us, it's all of him. Mm -hmm. But then we're going to start to see the fruit of our salvation come forth. Mm -hmm. For God created us to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do, Ephesians 2.10. And those good works are the fruit of our salvation. They're not the root of our salvation. Mm -hmm. You see, Roy, the thing is, people, including Christians, who say they don't know for sure whether they have eternal life, what are they trusting in? Their own knowledge. If they're trusting in their own good works to get to heaven. They're not trusting in the finished work of Christ. As myself, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Does that make sense? A whole lot. All right, so Roy, the next time someone asks you, Roy, are you sure you're going to heaven? What are you going to tell them? Yes. Based on what? Based on knowing that God, based on what did he say? He was just what's the part? The last one. Christ suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous is to bring us to God. That's right. And Christ is the righteous and you are? The unrighteousness. That's right. And the only way you can be righteous is? If you have Christ. Amen.